Hey guys, so I just want to share with you some of the progress that I made on the Shredder project. And this Shredder project is a little bit like the one you might find on the Precious Plastic website or YouTube channel. And uh, the only difference being that this is a lot more affordable. So this was designed with the idea that the, the tools and equipment and materials uh, that go into the Precious Plastic Shredder and similar equipment um, are pretty expensive for uh, maybe a young student who wants to do a science fair project. So the goal of this shredder was to try to find a way to make something with similar performance, but a whole lot cheaper and a whole lot easier to put together. So let's turn it on and test it out. Destruction. And these are the sorts of plastic pieces that come out of it. And depending on how you set it up, these parts can be bigger or smaller. And the key to making this shredder is plain old washers. And these washers are spinning around on a three quarter inch threaded steel rod. And the first step is shaping these washers into something resembling a cutting blade. So here I'm using a cheap Harbor Freight Tools angle grinder to cut off the parts that I marked already in black. And you could see how it would look assembled with all the spacer washers in between. I picked up this old gear motor for about 50 bucks. And you can see here some of the motor specifications. And the key ones to make a note of are the gear ratio and the torque. And that's really the most important one. This one is 600 inch pounds, which should be just fine given the size of our blades. And I'm making this main box here out of wood. So I'm using a scroll saw to cut a hole for the ball bearings that will be used to allow the central threaded rod to turn freely to make sure the blades move smoothly. And I'm using a borrowed table saw to make sure that all the edges are nice and straight. This ball bearing will be hot glued into place because it's not really supporting any real weight, won't have any real stresses on it. It's just used to support that main rod. And I'm cleaning up some of the edges on the hole for the other rod using a regular 18 volt drill. and it seems to turn nice and smooth. And here's what the finished box looks like. And note that the sides that the rods go through are doubled up because those will face some stresses between the two rods. And I noticed that the first time I used it, the plastic wasn't really getting cut, but it was getting smushed sort of between the blades and the washers on the other side. So we'd have to fix that. So I made a series of notches and edges, 180 degrees away from each other on the washers opposite the blades. And you could see what they look like here. They're not very big notches, but this was done just to test out the idea. And you see here, the notches in the back fit nicely into this piece of wood that's been mounted in the back of the box. And this will help to keep the blades sturdy while there's plastic on the other side being ripped apart. And my colleague here is helping me to mount some of the nuts and blades and washers. And I'm just using a couple of wrenches to tighten these nuts as much as I can, and that should hold these in place. I was thinking originally I might need some sort of steel epoxy or Gorilla Glue, which I've used in the past successfully for this sort of thing. But it turns out you don't actually even need to do that. These things will actually hold in place without any form of glue or welding. 
and would certainly be a lot easier if we weren't dealing with circular shaped holes in the washers or a round rod like this, but instead something that had shape like a square or a hexagon, but that would bring the cost way up. And this seemed to work just fine during all the testing. None of the blades slipped even when using some really thick bottle caps. But if I were using a lot more blades in a row, I certainly would try to mount these with some sort of a glue. And you could see here what the final setup looks like with everything mounted in place. And you can use wood screws or drywall screws to hold all of this all together and use washers underneath the motor to make sure it's at the right height. And to prevent all the plastic from falling in between the holes here, it's best to use some sort of a hopper. And in this case, we've used a bunch of old pizza boxes hot glued together to make this rudimentary hopper. It's not beautiful and it certainly doesn't fill in all the holes, but it does a pretty good job of making sure most of the plastic goes through the way it's supposed to. And in another video on this YouTube channel, you could check out what I've used all this plastic for. I've used it to make a bunch of things, including replacement parts and some pretty cool and artistic looking things. Check out all the cool patterns you can make from just different types of HDPE. As always, thanks for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe.